Hello and welcome to Discovery, where we have the opportunity to talk to people working here in the village to allow more of our creative talents to come forward. And I'm here with David Walsh, the president of the Pencil and Brush, no, Brush and Pencil Club. Uh, and David, just a little bit about your uh, experience here and your time here in the village with the, with the club. I've been here in the village almost five years in June, and I've been part of the, the club probably four and, a goal, four and a half years, and then became the president September of 22. And since then, because there was um, talk about if nobody stepped up as a president, that they would lose the club. They would shut it down. So I wasn't going to let that happen because a lot of people store their art here in the lockers in the studio. And it's a great place to do painting, watercolor, pencil, you name it whatever kind of art that you're doing. And it's a great place to meditate doing your art. Okay. So about how many people are in the club at this point? Right now I'm counting 51 members. 51. Excellent. And by being a member of the club, you get access to the studio, which we'll show people around <clears throat> a little bit later. Yeah, you have access to the studio. You don't absolutely have to be part of it. You can go, come here for classes, uh, watercolor or acrylic, oil painting class, but it's better to, to be part of the club because then you get on the distro and you know what's going on. Sure. Is, is there a club membership uh, due? or Club dues? membership is $15 a year, paid it every May. We just had our art show a week and a half ago, which was very successful. Yep. Every year we collect the dues, and if you have a locker, it's $5 extra. Very good. Planned activities, it's not just people coming in here and doing their art. Maybe you want to talk about some of those classes and uh, the ways people can get involved in that. Well, today is Wednesday and at 1.30, Lorraine has her class. She teaches oil and acrylic and from 1.30 to 4, 4 p.m. So whatever medium you're working on, whichever, if, if you're bringing your acrylic work or your oil painting, she'll help you with that. And then Ed Little is, is a permanent fixture here, Friday afternoons from 2 to 4. He was a professor of art has 40 plus years experience and will teach you and, and guide you with any medium that that you're working with he knows all of them here as a resource <clears throat> he's here if you the minimum is three people and people pay him directly for his expertise oh, okay so it's more one-on-one -on -one, if you will yeah so a minimum of three people on friday afternoons and he will be here and he's also doing a lecture series called talk about art starting on June 12th. The first one is going to be the Baroque and Rocco styles in room D in Sierra Coca right next door. And then there's one scheduled for July and August. So that'll be talk about art for an hour each time. And then he'll stay afterwards and answer questions if you need. But going back to the acrylic uh, with Lorraine, do people have, need to have experience or they can be uh, they could be uh, beginners, and Lorraine will work with you. She'll, she'll work with you at your level, and she's very okay. patient. She's been here for a while, and um, I have flyers right there to make sure people come back. Okay. If everybody, if anybody is interested in Lorraine, I have her phone number. You can contact her directly at 203-525-1949. Again. 203-525-1949. And when you come to a class like the Acrylics, <clears throat> are uh, brushes and paints, uh, mediums provided, or that's an additional fee? No, there's a, and there, there's a poster that was hanging in Sarah Cook Hall that has a suggested list of materials. Okay, so that's the individual's responsibility. <clears throat> yes. Uh, if they want to do it. Um, so that's We've got the, the classes, we've got the, I call it more a lecture type thing about art and art history. Anything else coming up in the... <clears throat> in demos. So we, we do have a board here. So Artemis works very hard to put together demonstrations of either oil painting, watercolor, or any other. We're trying to get more people to do pastel. I'm probably going to do scratch board. But we have a free demo coming up with my professor in June 10th, which mm -hmm. is a Saturday, one to three, right here, Sarah Cook. 
he has 50 years experience. His name is Rick McCollum. He does mostly Western type art and he's incredible. But there will be coffee and snacks available, but the demo is free for guests. So typically demos are $5 for guests. Okay. But this is a very important one. So I like to promote this and bring as many people as we can. We can easily hold 30 people here. So you've used this term scratch board and I have to say every other term you've said, I've said, oh, I think I know what pastel is. I know what acrylic is, but I am clueless about what scratch board means. <clears throat> the scratch board is at the back of it is, um, if you ever have a workshop at home, you know that peg material that you hang tools on? Yep. Well, the back of it is that material. Okay. And on the front of it is one eighth of an inch compressed clay. It's called Kaloan clay. It's white. Okay. Right. It's very white. So then the factory sprays probably four coats of any ink. So when you scratch it, it's white underneath. Ah. So it's black to begin with. Yeah. You scratch it. And then color could be added with colored India inks. Like I use Dr. Martin's India inks. I, and I always thought India ink was only black, but you're saying just a type of <clears throat> ink and it can be any color. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm learning more and more. But when you scratch on the scratch board, once you do it, you're done? I mean, you can't, there's no equivalent to like an eraser. <clears throat> no, it really depends on pressure. So you do it very lightly. If you make a mistake, you just take full strength black in the ink and go over it. Okay. But if you dig into it, because it is clay, there comes a point where you dig in too deep, you can't recover, you have to start okay. over. What about it appeals to you as a medium to work with? It's the opposite of pen and ink. So you need to think in opposites as far as values. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that, that's number one. But I could take an image of an animal, a pet, especially I do a lot of pets, transfer the image of it onto the board or I take, take the image and tape it and do the outline. So it leaves an impression. And all I do inside is where the eyes, the nose, and mouth are so that you have proper proportions. Mm -hmm. Everything is else's hand, freehand, do the fur, to do the values. Right. right. But you get that start from yeah. the you overall... Can, it's a very know. detailed art. That's why I like it. But it takes, takes a long time. Typically, a really good one will be 30 hours plus, wow. depending on Inside. the detail that I want, because I use exacto blade. Tattoo needles to blend, the same needles that ladies right. use at the salons. Fiberglass brush for fur. And... That's why you get the fine details in the lines. And so you go to an art store and you buy whatever size uh, scratch board you want. Yeah, it comes five by seven, six by six, eight by 10, 11 by 14, and I think up to 16 by 20. Okay. Well, I mean, in terms of the people who come, uh, do most people work in multiple mediums or most people like to stay with one that they're comfortable with? I think most people that are doing watercolor, they, they stick with watercolor, or if they like oil, they stick with that. My grandfather was an artist, can do any medium, so my goal is to be a more well-rounded artist like he was. Okay. So that's why I'm going to school. Oh, and so, well, and maybe you want to say a word or two? You <clears throat> going currently... to Payer, Payer Art College. They're located at the UB campus, University of Bridgeport campus in Bridgeport, Connecticut. They bought a building there and they're growing, so that's why they moved from Hamden. And I'm in the bachelor's program for illustration. And that's gonna take you another couple of years or? I think by 25, the fall of 25, I'll be done. All right. If I go continuous, spring, fall, spring, summer, and then right. till 25. All right, so everybody can put it on their calendar to come to the graduation. Very good. In terms of um, uh, going to get materials, what do you advise people can get this, like the scratch board and the paints here <clears throat> in town? Or Well, you could go to dickblick.com because if you go to Amazon, a lot of times it's more expensive. 
go to dickblick.com. There's a couple other stores like Jerry's. A lot of people in the club know about Jerry's art supply, but Dick Blick has, has a discount that surpasses Amazon, believe it or not. Okay, very good. Well, before we show people around the studio, just to remind them, it's over here in the Stables building behind uh, Fireside, and uh, people are welcome to come in and take a look, and, you know, that's the best way to find out the amenities that we have here in the village. Uh, you <coughs> need to go in and see them to understand how lucky we are to have them, but then take the next step and take advantage of them and participate either by being a club member or attending some of these demos or, or lectures that David's been talking about. <coughs> okay, so David's going to show us a little bit about what Scratchboard looks like and, and how it works. So this is a friend of mine that was in the military with me, Lynn and her horse, Teddy, which sadly she lost a couple years ago. But... Um, I wanted to show my appreciation, my friendship, and I used to spend a lot of time with this horse. I took this picture, which is not very clear, so that's another thing. Yeah. If, the, if the image is a little bit more defined, it's easier to transfer it. So in this case where it's not as defined, you have to kind of make it up. So I took this image, I taped it to here, I traced the outline of it, I did the eyes, the nose, the key features of Lynn's face, and that's it. Everything was done with X-Acto blade, tattoo needle. These like three little wires right here. Okay. An awl. This is just the regular awl. And a fiberglass brush for fur right in this area. And then... Scratch, add color with Dr. Martin Indie inks. Scratch it again until I get the right effect. That's it. It just right. takes a little bit of patience and a lot of time to get the right area. This right here in the background, I had it brighter, but I pushed it back because I wanted to bring yep. this forward. So just a little bit more work I need to get done on this and then... It's a gift for my friend. Very nice. And that's your, you kind of keep all your supplies organized in your... <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's very easy to have everything right here and actually have a locker. Because I have a lot of stuff in at home. I probably wouldn't be able to find it. <laughs> okay. Right, real easy because I have a lot of things you know, readily available to me. Very good. So, in the past... They used to have models that would sit here or just do this. They take the chairs away, just have a still life because you have the backdrop and there's lighting right here. But it helps if you have somebody sitting there reading a book or just posing naturally um, clothed, of course. And they would do that and just do like a study for their human figure. Okay. Um, Good. This right here is for um, artwork to store it in these bins while it dries. So, for instance, I created a color wheel to help me with the primary colors. It's probably, no, it's, it's not, not bad. But once I'm done with it, I put it in here so it dries. And there's plenty of room. This is probably three feet high on the bottom one. So people store their items here, big canvases ready, ready to go. And again, it's very convenient. So you don't have to bring it home, lug it around. There's a few easels here. I, I took out some easels that weren't working very well and I, I kept some really good easels. All right. And that's about it. Well, thank you very much. and. Uh... Hopefully people watching this will um, take advantage of coming by and learning some more. Uh, we'd love to have everybody that likes to do art. You're more than welcome.